Okay. Yeah. We're not there. And we're going to leave so Bruno alone. I guess it'll be another, it could be another animated story about Bruno. But Bruno, let's just say Bruno has, he has like, like Bruno, like teddy bears in there. He's the hero of the, of the, um, of the uh, sanctuary. And he orchestrated a great escape. He's one of the, but apparently it wasn't Bruno. It was Judo, who was the one. I just said this. Judo was the one who broke the lock, right? Because he was he was watching the guy, the guard opened the thing and the lock, and it, and he's the one who broke the lock, and then Bruno just let the guys out of there. So, uh, yeah, Bruno. My Bruno is taking all the the credit for Judo's hard work. Bruno, quel profiteur, hein? Quel profiteur, ce Bruno. <laughs> And I wanted to have his T-shirt made. Okay. Man, now I'm gonna have to go back to the drawing board. Is it? Yeah. Where's like Judo? Why is Judo? Why isn't Judo there? So the guy Judo, Bruno. Us, yeah, he's telling us Judo was the one who was watching the guards. Okay. I'm the yeah. So anyway, if you want to find out more, go to Takagama, and, and mm. you'll get the story. This is a good promo for them. Go to the to the Chim Sanctuary in Freetown. And you'll find out all about Bruno and Judo. And no, we'll I want to get your mom on to tell the story because I just, ah, oh, the world oh, has yeah, to know. Tell the story you too. know. Do you know what I love about that story is I think it really embodies the story of Sierra Leone. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, freedom fight. Yeah. It's too bad it wasn't actually a German guy who was killed, it was one of, one of his drivers. The, oh yeah that's what they told us it was one of the black guys who was who was part of his um delegation and then um yeah just like the fight against injustice and i yeah. mean bruno i i feel like bruno and judo now now that now that you've got the inside story you're gonna have oh, to yeah. tell the story because is your mom aware of the update yeah. Uh, no, I haven't told her. I'll tell her. See? See? Her so, the story, I mean, I'm thinking <laughs> this, I'm thinking this should be like a, a comic book format mm -hmm. and it's, it needs to have its own like it's cartoon or something, animation yeah. and the story needs to be told. Superhero. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. okay. So, we got to the end of the chimp tour. We didn't get attacked by Bruno or by Judo, luckily. And um, we, uh, we, uh, the next part of the tour, we, we were done with VSL. So we said thank you to VSL for all of their services. Um, no, when we are done, so when we we're done at the Chim Sanctuary, we did something else. We went all the way uh, up to um, Sugarloaf Mountain there, the top of Freetown, and we looked at Freetown. We looked at, we took some pictures, we saw the big um, antenna, and we were at the, now Sugarloaf Mountain is, is the highest hill in Freetown, where you can see the whole of Freetown. So it was very scenic, very great, and we, you know, we, we got to see the whole of Freetown. And I was I've thinking, been there. Oh, you were there, okay. Yeah. I was thinking, this is, a, was to my, in my mind, I was thinking how strategic this, this spot is, because whenever there's a coup d'etat in Africa, the first thing they take over is the radio station. So I'm thinking if anybody was thinking of anything like that, that would be the first strategic place they would, they would uh, once they take over the state house, they'd send their troops to the radio station. But anyways, um, not to get too, too delayed on that, I'm just thinking about my grandfather and how he survived three coup attempts as well. It was an interesting thought that popped to my mind. Uh, he did survive three coup attempts, so he was a man of destiny, I guess. Um, so yeah, wow. so... Yeah, so we went to Sugarloaf, and uh, we saw the Freetown, then we went home, and we got, uh, that was it for VSL, part of the tour. The next part of the tour was facilitated by our good cousin, uh, Petit Frère, Salia, right? Um, and uh, it was uh, the really heartwarming aspect of the tour. I mean, it's it's past, present, and future all combined, but we... um. We took the drive with uh, Al Hassan, who's uh, Salia's right hand man, because Salia had gone the day before to the village to prepare okay. everything. So Al Hassan came and he we squished we squished him in the car with our photographer and uh, Ivor and um, 
who else was there? Jonathan was driving and, and our cameraman, Alman, my little nephew, who's a really good camera person, taking great pictures. He's been recognized all over the country for his pictures. Um, so uh, he was the he was the photographer of the tour of the Boris Boris um, Eternal Sankofa African Tours, and um, a creation story for him, which he told us how Boris was operating on the tour, was that it was Boris who got him got him into photography. Without Boris, he would never have gotten into photography because he was into IT, this and that, so, you know the regular things people do nowadays, and then Boris. Uh, uh, I don't know. Boris uh, saw him taking pictures. He uh, he encouraged him to start doing it as a more serious business, and now he that's how he makes his living. So it's a great that's great fantastic. story. Yeah. So Boris was part of the story, and ironically, um, at home, as you know, we have the Boris there. You know, you've seen the Boris before, right? Yeah. yeah. The statue of Boris, which is made from the three D a three D statue out of Boris, which is just a small Boris in the corner. Of the room right so uh, he was watching over the tour um but yeah salia went over the day before then al hassan came and then we drove to um to baima or gabul um which is the village which um which my my brother ivor was being welcomed back to okay so we got there you know it took uh three hours or so three hours and a bit of, of, of driving to get there and it's really that the, the village is really close to Bo, the really the city of Bo, not the village of Gabo with a G, but the Bo, um, which is the second biggest city in, in Sierra Leone. <laughs> we can't be only Frita. <laughs> we can't be only the colony. <laughs> we need the protectorate. We all one. Okay, so um so yeah, so it's it's really close to the second biggest city in city in Sierra Leone, which is Bo. And uh when we went to Gabo, we were welcomed by the police escort, right? We got changed into our, you know, our, our nice attire for, um, for formal attire, you know, because uh, we had formal attire because we knew it was going to be a great occasion. But we had a welcome ceremony home for for Mad for Ivor, right? So we got changed, and then um, we got to the side of the road. Uh, with the, the 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 vice chief of the village, got us all prepped and ready. It's going to be a wonderful ceremony. So uh, when we got to the side of the road, the men of the village um, reserved a great treatment for for Ivor. Okay, so they had him on their heads on the hammock, carrying him on a hammock, and we had the whole village, especially the young children of the village, and they were singing the song, "Home again, when shall I see my home?" When shall I see my native land? I shall never forget my home. So it was very heartwarming and very emotional moment to be in the and to be in the in the hammock with the children. You can imagine singing, "Home again." When shall I see my home? When shall I see my native land? I shall never forget my home. So they were singing this song, and we were walking down. Um, there's a little passageway to go from the road to the center of the village where they have um, the meeting space for the villagers. So we walked all the way down there uh, for a good amount of time singing that song with the children. The youthful energy of the children was was, was bringing up, you know, the, the chi and the energy and the vibes and really making people feel very welcome and really making them feel at home. And we uh, we went to the center, the meeting place of the village. Like um, it's like a community center type place. It's just a place uh, I where people meet, and uh, then we had a ceremony. We had um, the um, the masqueraders come out um, from the male and the female side, and interestingly enough, Minde country is the only matriarchal uh, matriarchal ethnic group in Sierra Leone where they have female paramount chiefs, and they also have a female lead masquerader as well so that they had the, the the female head masquerader uh who was there and the male head masquerader and they were dancing and they were doing all types of tricks and interesting things and we had the children doing some dancing and spinning on their heads and everybody was just it was just like a real um everybody was reveling it was a, a real jovial ceremony 
uh, upbeat, um, somebody coming back home is that's the way it's supposed to be, right? So people are glad, to, smiling, laughing, and it was a very good uh, energy, right? Uh, we had um, um, Paramount Chief Ruth came. Um, she came. Um, she was presiding over the event. Um, now, Paramount Chief Ruth, if for those who don't know, she's one of the elders in our community in, 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 in Geneva, which we grew up with, calling her Auntie Ruth, because um, she's very, uh, her, her uh, and her husband, Uncle Alfred, were, um, were, were part of our community in, in Switzerland as well. So um, she came and she was very happy to see, um, to see us. And uh, during the ceremony, um, Ivor became Madagbani, Madagbani. So he was given a name, Mada, which means um, a, a, a man or a, a, a man of power and vigor, just like Madabio, who's our president currently. And Gbani is the name of the family which he was um, he was given to, right? So he's part of the Bani family, okay? So the Bani family were there. They welcomed him, uh, took pictures, hugged him, said, you know, welcome back. And he was given the country close of the Mende people. So um, I'm not talking about the, the, the Dutch stuff and the European knockoffs, the Chinese stuff. I'm talking about the original African worked material, right? Which um, it's an honor to wear because it's it's gone down from generation to generation. So he was given the country close with a nice hat like the real chief, right? And um, <clears throat> that was a great event. Uh, we had uh, the whole village there. The ceremony was conducted in English and Minde, right? Um, the head teacher was doing the translation of the village, the um, instantaneous translation from <laughs> Minde to, to English, English back to Minde. And um, yeah, so we did the ceremony. And we, um, after the ceremony, we took pictures, we talked, the, the masqueraders came and, 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 and danced with us and et cetera. It was just a, a wonderful scene altogether that we, uh, that we um, encountered. And uh, after all the reveling and all the fun activities, we, we had dinner at uh, Paramount Chief Ruth's um, house, uh, Paramount Chief Raundu. He took us to a house and the house had been around since the 30s. I Meaning it had been, a, of course, reworked and everything else, but she was telling us it's 1937 or something, the house was initially built. So this is how her family and even Salia's family, both sides of the family were all paramount chiefs. So she was telling us how on Uncle Alfred's side, that Salia's family was paramount chiefs on her side too. So he had all the chiefdom in his heritage. So I guess he's going to be a chief. So we'll see. But anyway his endeavor to get us to come back to the country and how that welcome was a wonderful one. And uh, Ivor turned to Madak Bani, was very thankful for the um, wonderful, wonderful welcome which he received from the Minde and from the people of, 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 of um, Gabo. Um, at the end of that, he also got some land, half an acre of land allocated to him. Oh, wow. Which... Um, we're looking maybe at making a drying factory for corn or something of that nature because they need some of that stuff in the village. So, um, yeah, the land was allocated to him in the Gabani, Gabani Bani family field where the Gabanis have their land, not too far from the road. Um, and, uh, yeah, that was not only uh, uh, just uh, uh, an emotional thing, but an actual physical thing which he can get involved with in as well right very okay. practical so him being someone who um, works works in mortgage um, and stuff like that um, it's something which he's looking forward to uh, get involved with involved in so that happened and that was the I think that was the the heart of the tour was was that wonderful ceremony how did you meet? How did you come into contact with Iba? Well, Madak Bani now, but um, yes, I he's part of my lion circle. It's a good question. I had the t-shirt on. It's a, it's it's a, it's a group of um, 
professional African men, um, like a support group, but it's a group of very progressive African men in, in, in Toronto. And I'm the one who carries the, um, the ancestors in that group, uh, to the group in general. I do the welcome and I, I, and I try to keep people grounded in their ancestral heritage so they don't get caught up in too much Eurocentric stuff. Um, even though it, it is a big part of it in a way, but I'm always the grounding person in that group. So, uh, yeah, I've been in that group for a while and, um, the ancestors took me to that group and, uh, I just kept on doing the work of the ancestors in that group, including this, which is a reconnecting some African person to his ancestors, you know, Boris Shaka Stevens, um, was, uh, my, my big brother. Um, he was very much involved, uh, actually doctor, because he was also Dr. Boris Shekhar Stevens. Uh, he had his PhD, but he was in robotics. But he was um, very much involved in, in, in doing things to help develop Sierra Leone, to help it move forward, improve, whether touristically, whether industrially, whether agro, agro industry as well. He had lots of, whether in sports and judo as well, he was very involved in bringing some resources to Sierra Leone to improve the plight of the Sierra Leonean people and to create avenues for growth and to, to enhance the lives of people in Sierra Leone by interchanging with people in the, in the West, whether it was, um, you know, people, scuba diving equipment, he was taken there to do some fishing expeditions with um, some Swiss people or doing judo, getting some people to um, to acknowledge or to do some judo training with some of the masters in Sierra Leone to develop an Olympic contender, Sierra Leone Olympic contender in judo. Um, but yeah, his, his thing was just doing things to uh, uplift the people in Sierra Leone and creating long-term durable relationships for development with people in the diaspora right so this was the in homage to his um work because he transitioned 2016 unfortunately he's in the ancestral plane so he's con he's continuing to rest in peace and in the light so in his um memory uh and in his energy we wanted to uh enable people to go back and to make significant contributions and create some win-win scenarios uh being that um that's what he was trying to fulfill. We just wanted to, in some way, shape, or form, uh, continue on his um, on his uh, on his path. So this is a continuation of his uh, work to get um, Africans from the diaspora, which he was very big on. He was big on possibly bringing the Gucci, Gucci Gula people and the Nova Scotian people to mm. bring them to Sierra Leone. That was another. Uh, another aspect of his uh, work. So this is just continuing that, bringing some people of Sierra Leonean heritage to Sierra Leone so that they can contribute in the durable development of the country and they can also benefit themselves from the spiritual um, reckoning of their ancestors and being at home, you know? So this is, um, this was why we um, started Boris Simber Eternal African Tours so we can continue to grow this wonderful concept which he had initiated. And, um, and that's why it's very interesting that uh, when we talked about the photographer who was inspired by him, you know, the driver who was driving us, his father was one of his major colleagues when he was in the country. So we're just continuing to do as best as we can what he had started doing um, and um, paying homage to him in that way. Okay, so we uh, finished at the village. It was wonderful. We had a wonderful vegan plaza for me and other. The food also, sorry, the part about the trip I haven't told you so far is it was catered by my cousin, um, family cousin, um, African cousin. She's, she's, she's adopted by my aunt, Maria. And she, she has a restaurant now. But she used to have a restaurant before. But when we were there, she restarted another restaurant. But she's an excellent cook. And she's also accommodating for vegan cuisine and she, she she has a wide variety of things under her belt so she was catering for us and it was wonderful food my friend got to eat everything from crane cray to cassava leaves to potato leaves to sawa sawa 
Um, mm-hmm. Everything you could imagine, Jello Fries and uh, Olele, and he was just eating like a champion. And we were afraid <laughs> his belly was going to burst, but he, he was okay. He was okay at the end of the day. So that was part of the trip, which we need to mention, because if you, if you like your belly, you will like this tour. We have an excellent caterer. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> and she caters for every different type of meal you might need. Um, so, um, yeah, so uh, the last part of the tour was a future part of the tour, right? And um, the future part of the, sorry, we went to the beach uh, on the, uh, well, I'll tell you about the beach again. But anyway, we did, uh, we went to the school, to Hope Academy for Girls, which we had programmed our workshop for. We did a two days of workshops, right? We started off with a workshop in accounting and uh, budgeting by my friend Madak Bani now, formerly known as Ivor. He did a, a, a workshop, which was very good because he talked about needs and wants and how you need to, to, to meet your needs before you get into your wants. And it was a very good uh, little thing for the girls to keep in mind, um, which he, um, he he did a very great job. And uh it, it was a little bit of an opportunity of those who wanted to study accounting to get a little bit of a, more insights into accounting, right? So that was the first day he did that. And um, we brought some school equipment for the girls and some calculators and notebooks and stuff we, which we, we were able to give to their staff members to make sure they was equally distributed. Um, and then after that, the next workshop, the next day, no, I came back after the weekend because we were watching the games and relaxing for a weekend. And then on the Monday after that, I came and I did my workshop on uh, writing, right? And a little bit on African history because I used my African ancestral manuscript to get some some history and um, to make it very interesting and make them learn a little bit about ancient Egypt and the culture and the traditions of their global African ancestors and global African heritage. Um, but we did a the workshop with haikus and rhyming couplets and they got the chance to write and read and, and perform their poetry for the class so it was a very uh, interactive workshop we did we ended off with a peace circle where we uh, passed around the talking piece and people spoke from their heart and um, then we gave them some books um, and uh, some some school equipment some prizes for the people who had chose showed the most initiative during the workshops and um yeah, the, the staff was very open and very um, appreciative of what we were doing, and it went very well, uh, the, that segment of the future uh, for the tour. It was very important that we um, not only get some land so we can work on the land, but we also get an initiative where we can just continue giving back and supporting, you know, some of the young people in uh, Sierra Leone. That sounds really excellent. Um, I think, you know, bridging that gap, I think, I feel anyway, um, bridging that gap between the diaspora and back home, as it were, I think is something that, you know, people can get involved in on an individual basis, in groups, or maybe even, I mean, I know that there are alumni, um, yeah, societies for, quite a few of the schools um but yeah i think it's definitely an area that can be developed that can grow um and i'm hoping that at some point i'll be able to make my contribution as well so <laughs> this is really inspiring to hear so thank you very much for sharing this with us yes and, okay, yeah, do you I have any uh, any questions or any aspects of the tour or anything for other people you think the people yeah, would like to know? I think it might be worth kind of explaining a bit about the setup. So I think most of your activities were centered in Freetown. And then you talk about the school being in York, right? So yeah. if I had video skills, I, I'd insert a little map to say, hey, you know, this is where oh, yeah, yeah. it's like, this is the cotton tree and then York is down the peninsula. Cause it's, I mean, I can picture all of these things because I know what the map looks like. Yeah, so, but, you're right. But York is like, what, a satellite village? So, yes, it's a satellite, satellite village? village, not too far, about four, 30 minutes 
thirty, depending on uh, on the speed you're driving. My driver was going quite fast at times, but thirty to forty five minutes from from Freetown, I would say, to to drive there. And so it's in the suburbs. And it's a village there. Um, they make an excellent palm wine as well. We got to say that a good mom pama. <laughs> the pollo is pretty good there. So when we go there, we always uh go and get a little bottle of that stuff right <laughs> yeah so um it's a good for the for the for the puyo or the palm wine and um yeah is it's it a little bit still, is it still considered is that still within the western area yeah it's still in the western area okay yeah still in the western area not but not free town proper yeah no. not free town proper so that's where york is and gabo is all the way to the south next to the bowl uh, by Masanga village, which we went to, is right close to, to Bo City, right? B O City. So, um, interesting because we normally, like you, like you know, us, uh, well, with the Creoles and stuff, and lots of the other people, uh, Sierra Leone is just free town, right? And, um, it's unfortunate because there's so many other things in other places, and we plan on going to the other places, whether it's, um, Calahoun, whether it's McKinney. You know, whether it's Kabbalah, you know, there's a, whether it's Kono, you know, there's so many other places we could we could visit in Sierra Leone. And Sierra Leone is a very small country when you think about it, compared to places like Ghana, Nigeria. Really and truly going around Sierra Leone is it's not I mean, can you imagine going around Nigeria? That that would take you ages and, and, and it would be really hard, but going around Sierra Leone, being such of a small country, diamond shaped country. Is much easier than uh, most other West African countries, probably apart from Gambia, because Gambia is so small that um, yeah, well, you could go you know around what? Gambia no problem. <laughs> when you uh, when you organize your round Sierra Leone tour, count me in. Mm. <laughs> count me in. I want to come. Yeah, it's definitely not a trip I want to do by myself. But what was I mean, how was it traveling from Freetown to Bo? Was it? Oh, I mean, the roads are perfect that... now. There was not even a bump. We could speed down, just speed down, and like get on the highway. The no, the yeah. roads from the roads from Freetown to Bo is is like state of the art road. Some other places in the country, I think there's the really off roads, but I guess because it's the two main cities, and there's lots of exchange between the two, that mm -hmm. they really made sure that road was good. And of course, now that the SLPP is there, they, I mean, that's both their stronghold, right? So they, they want to make sure that um, that road is, no, but that road has no issues. You, you okay. don't feel like uh, there's no, not even any potholes on the road. I, I, I could, How I, long does that journey take? It took about three hours. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, three to four hmm. hours. I have to check on Google Maps how far apart they are. Uh, in kilometers or miles. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. True. True. yeah. Interesting. Oh, yeah. So going to Bo is not is no problem now. If you want to go to Bo, um, I mean, like I said, maybe probably McKenney is. I heard McKenney is no problem either. You know, mm -hmm. and of course, all, all everything along the way to Bo, like Moyamba and places like that, you pass through them when you're going to Bo. So that road is pretty good. I mean, the main mm -hmm. road when you're going on the highway. Of course, when you you cut the side road, then you you might be in for it, and you need some good suspension and a you know a good four by four. But mm. um, when you're on that road, it's fine. Oh, it's good to know. It's good to know. I mean, uh, <laughs> I'm gathering inf squirreling away information. <laughs> yeah. To try and work out how I'm gonna make it work in my head. <laughs> oh yeah. Just, you yeah, definitely oh, got the boat. Bo is no problem to get there. We didn't yeah. actually go to Bo because we had uh, to go back, but we definitely enjoyed the village. You know, we definitely enjoyed the village. Excellent. I don't even think. Yeah, I think the closest thing that I've seen. Uh, yeah, I, the closest thing to a village that I've seen in Sierra Leone, I don't think is actually a village. It's more like a Hastings. Well, now it's almost like a suburb, really. It's not yeah. even a village anymore. Like it's called village, but it's not. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. 
So, I mean, anyway, the reflections we had, and, and just to, to sum up the tour, um, I think that that's the segment we, we would have. Um, three, uh, two kings went to Sierra Leone to, to get their crown refurbished, right? Two lions went there to get their maim reestablished, and uh, they visited. They came, they saw, they witnessed, they experienced, and they had um, a contribution to make, and they got contributed to. It was um, very uh, much of a practical and experiential journey, which incorporated the past, present, and the future. But as we know, they're all incorporated in the African cosmology to an everlasting now, because the ancestors are always with us, and they're never going anywhere. They're contributing to us. And by paying homage to them, we really are doing a service to ourselves and our community, because that's going to embellish our lives and enhance everything that we're doing. So it was really about enhancing our lives and enhancing the lives of those around us in our community and the journey. We also took the time, uh, myself personally, to go to the grave sites of uh, my grandmother, my aunts, mm -hmm. my uncles, my father. We found that uh, grave site and my grandfather right up on top of Parliament Hill and also pour libations on their grave sites because in our tradition, we pour libation and we commemorate our ancestors knowing that they're still part of our lives right mm -hmm. and we also did the the cola ceremony with my dad like we're having my broken cola not, not to my grandmother's grave uh, the book and we got a very good communication with him he was very glad of what we did so it was very empowering you know just uh, being able to uh, not only um talk about the ancestors but have an experience with the ancestors as well mm -hmm. um through that uh that's that that cola ritual and the libation which we were pouring so we did that and it was very important because of course we cannot forget those who came before because they're very mm -hmm. important to what we're doing in the future and um i was glad we had the chance to do that you know i was glad we had the chance to to uh to uh do these ceremonies and pour this libations and it wasn't just a platonic journey where we are just, you know, you know, dotting the I's and check, checking the T's. We were actually ritualizing with those who are there and the ancestors and, and kind of like amalgamating the different realms of reality so that um, we could get the mul multiple benefits, mm -hmm. you know, from the, from our journey. And I think that's where... Oh, well, this is just my opinion. I think that's where, you know, that's the major difference between sort of just being a tourist and just being shipped from one place to another and, you know, try this, like see this, not really maybe understand the context of what you're looking at and just just feel like, you know, when you're on that typical tourist, um, touristic kind of uh, bandwagon where you're just being shipped from place to place. Yeah, um, yeah I think this, you know, I think the 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 aspects that you've brought into it make it a unique experience, and it would be a unique experience to each person anyway. Because, well, it doesn't. I don't. I've never actually heard of anything like this. Um, mm -hmm. Even though I know, I I have heard of you know people uh, tracing their ancestry back to various. Um, groups in Africa and then traveling to those countries and but they probably get the same <laughs> kind of like tourist trap excursion thing um scheme <laughs> that yeah. any other tourist would get and they maybe they don't get to reconnect maybe they just get to be in a place but they don't have that um like tapping into local history and culture and even being adopted by a family that's a, I think that's a massive deal being given a new name that's like yeah. a baptism practically yeah but it, it has to be a it cannot be a, a an African person going to a Euro, 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 European um, perspective to experience the African culture it doesn't work and no. um Doing libations and doing these African things, which are not in the European paradigm, enhances who we are, our self-definition. So at the end of the day, it serves no purpose to just go like a European, look at people, you know, like you're in the museum 
and just trivialize the people and go to the resort. You need to have, I think, and if you're somebody who's searching for your African center and, and of, 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 of a level of intelligence where you're not afraid of um, the connecting to the motherland, then this is what you need to do. You need to you need to do libation. You need to go see the masqueraders. You need to understand that it's not just you know funny things. They actually represent something. The masqueraders. It's not just a trivial you know funny laugh at them. No, you need to get some more deeper understandings of these things. And I think it's so important that we uh, not trivialize the African people there and not trivialize their cultural inheritance and uh, pay homage to the ancestors as well. Because um, they were in a tradition, which um, we're we are trying to uh, enhance through our living, right? So it's very important that it be a, a real experience, a real authentically African experience that we give to African people. I agree, I agree, and um, yeah. Okay, we have less than one minute left. <laughs> We're still going to go. We're still going to go. <laughs> Enjoy the beach for the last seconds. Enjoy the beach. 